Thank you very much. Uh, it's, uh, I'm super happy to be here uh, with all of you talking about TinyML. Before I start, I would like to just let you know which kind of talk will be this one, just to be sure that everyone is on the same page. This is an introductory uh, talk where we're going to cover a lot of topics. I'm going to try not to overwhelm you a lot, but we're going to see a lot of things. And you're going to discover why the structure of this talk during the talk. Well, I'm going to keep it very short because uh, the chair did a great job uh, introducing me. Uh, then I'm just going to go into a couple of things. I am, the last years, I have been working mainly with sensors data. And it's this kind of projects that I just love to build also in my free time. Um, for instance, growing lettuces in my balcony, it's something that I just enjoy a lot and I truly recommend to you doing it. Um, also, implementing some machine learning pipelines to increase your happiness plants. And well, as you can see, my plants need it. And it's a clear example that sometimes we don't need machine learning to understand that our plants are not happy. But I enjoy a lot doing these kind of things. And in my last project that I developed at home, it was for kind of have control of my air quality. And I have a lot of fun building that because it was a monitoring system, but also a predictive system. I could know when I should activate my ventilation system. That in other words, was just when open the window. But I, and I enjoy a lot. I thought, wait, what if I can have this kind of system, but with me? When I go to the street and see how is the contamination level, what if I need to wear a mask or not? What are these kind of things? And that was the moment when I start with TinyML. Currently, I am developing this project. I cannot show you yet because it's not uh, done, but maybe for the next uh, conference we'll be ready. But during this time developing uh, this project, I learned a lot of things and I realized that this knowledge could be shared with the community and maybe could help to someone to just doing it easier. And let's start from the beginning. What is TinyML? TinyML, it's in the interception of two great worlds. It's an interception between data science and electronics, and specifically between machine learning and embedded system. And wow, it's awesome because you have a very great two worlds working together. Yeah, that's true. However, it could be kind of challenging sometimes because you need some knowledge of data science and also some knowledge of electronics, or have two teams that can work together and have good communication between them. But we are going to cover all these topics in case that you can just build your own projects as me. Why 10 email? Well, one of, the, to one of the, the key points from my perspective is data privacy, because you're going to be able to have all your manage your data, your prediction in the, in the device without having the necessity to have access to a cloud or other things. Low energy consumption. These devices doesn't require a lot of energy and a lot of uh, power. Low latency, in theory, should be faster. And also connectivity. If you're working with IoT uh, uh, systems and that data, um, this kind of sensor data, maybe you are going to face some internet connections time to time and you're going to lose data or you are going to have issues or maybe you need to have this system in a place where the internet doesn't arrive. This is one of the whys. And maybe you are thinking, yeah, but has this application in real life? Yes, we have, there are applications. We can find examples currently and also for the future. One of the topics that also I think that it's very, very important, it's healthcare. And 
It's because the data privacy that we were talking about. If you have a device that track your own information and can keep this data privacy, maybe it's a good uh, way to make things. Uh, of course, uh, this is only an example uh, publication, but there are m many of them that we can discuss later on. Also, agriculture. And maybe you're thinking, why agriculture is key? Well, not everywhere arrive internet, not everyone has access to internet either, and has the ability to have a device, or even in the mobile, uh, some models for predicting pests, predicting what can ha happen to your plant, could help to the farmers around the world. Also, smarter spaces. It's important to understand if you have a person in the room or not for security reasons, sometimes in, in some spaces. Then we have ma more. We have predictive maintenance. This is one of my favorite topics that I'm going to do in some mentioning because I have been working for long. Um, and it's because of that, is that you can predict also if something's going to fail in places that maybe the internet connection doesn't arrive. Also, we have well conservation. There are projects that uh, currently we can track elephants in this case, but also there are other with whales. In this case, it's to avoid four tips and avoid that the, the elephants could be killed. And also we have sound recognition. Maybe it's familiar to you this hey, blah, 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 or okay, blah, 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 and something happened, and maybe, oh, sorry, I'm gonna get the sound, and maybe something happened, maybe some uh, sound could play, yeah, some, maybe you're familiar with some of those. This is also uh, an application of something. Then, as we were talking about I, uh, before, um, there are some challenges or things that you need to have in consideration before you start this kind of projects. And we are going to start from the embedded system first, from the electronics part. First is the development boards, which one you are going to use, what, uh, what are uh, the, the needs of your project, which more. Of course, this is my bias because it's the boards that I am using currently for developing my and doing my experiments. And specifically, I am, uh, I am playing around these two. Um, but of course, you can choose the, the board that, uh, that you need or you want. What is important? Understand what are your needs of your project. And then this means that you're going to need to always have in mind what is your data science question and problem. And we are going to see it later with the, in the machine learning part, because it's even it's very cool to see, I'm going to take this board because it's a trending topic. Or maybe it's not the best for your, uh, your business case or your experiments or whatever you want to implement, right? We are going to see it later on. But just let you know, I'm super fan of those because also it's super small. I'm not sure if you can see it, but because it's very small, it's the size of my eye, but just to give you my, my two cents of that. What are some of the challenges? The heterogeneity, it's very hard. Um, it's very hard to have some standards and tell you, hey, you need to do A, B, C for all the boards. And of course, if you are in the electronic world, on, for you will be very easy, but if you came from the data world, it will be more challenging. And of course, the constraints, the constraints that we are going to find. And this is something very important because when we're developing things in data science, of course, we try to be efficient, we try to optimize. However, we have other kind of challenges in the computing side, for instance, because usually we uh, develop our project in a computer or in a cloud and kind of happy, we train the models, we have these uh, things, and, but then in this case will be much challenging. This means that, for instance, a training, we are going to need to keep it as we are doing it right now in a computer or in the cloud. Of course, these numbers are orientative. They're going to be changing depends on the case. Also, this is the information that uh, came from this website. Of course, it could be different, but 
just I wanted to share with you the constraints that we need to face. And one of the key things is the memory. We are gonna need to fit machine learning models into this, into this, uh, in this storage and have it running in this memory. Let's, but no worries, we are gonna go into that, but it's a real challenge. Of course, development environment. If you develop and you work with microcontroller, for you this is not a problem at all, but if you came from a different world, it's like, okay, well, how, how I do that, right? This, uh, this is new, it's like I need to connect it and, and magic happens, or I can do something else. Yeah, um, well, there are, different there are different options that you can develop, of course. You can also use your command line, a very simplified uh, ID or just, just a cross-platform that it's open source and also is language agnostic and you can work about that. And of course, you're gonna know, know a bit of electronics or ask for some support with someone because you're gonna need to do some the flashing and move uh, files and understand how fine words and and the specificity of the board and these kind of things that, again, when you are in the field is super obvious, but when you came out of that, it's like, I'm not sure what I'm doing. Um, and of course, always reading the documentation, also check, my recommendation is check uh, before by some board, check the, the documentation to be sure that you are gonna be able to follow up. But it's true that once you to, to start, you realize that this, it's quite straightforward. It's just a, uh, follow some steps and everything gonna work sooner or later. Let's go for the machine learning uh, challenges. And on here, we're gonna find uh, some of them. Well, and here, we have a typical data science machine learning pipeline with, different, with the different steps. If you are into the data science world, you know that this linearity is not correct because we are gonna need to collect the data, process the data, wait, the model is not performing very well, you're gonna need back, and then oh, what about now? I know, wait, I need more data, the data is not very good, and you're gonna need to have this iteration in continuous. And this is gonna happen the same, this will be exactly the same. You need to do exactly the same that you, things that you do normally, but with some differences that we are gonna arrive later on. The first, um, the, 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 the only thing that I wanted to add in that point is like, just be careful because as I was mentioning, call the pipeline gonna need to be into the computer or cloud that you use until the deployment, of course that uh, will be in our microcontroller. If some of you are thinking, but wait, how oh, I'm gonna implement now a neural network because I came from a different field, how can I do that uh, from zero? There are options that could simplify this process and you can use a non-code option. In this case, in this platform, the each impulse, you can have all the pipeline just with clicking options. Uh, you can have the dashboard, the, there is, uh, you can have the collection of data that you can, I think that you can have it with sound. Then you can have some model, train the model, have the metrics and that. Um, one of uh, the things that are very cool is that also you can know how big it's gonna be your model when you train and see all your metrics and decide if it's, this is a good option for you or you need to just you now go back and do all this pipeline that we were talking about. Maybe you need more data, maybe, maybe not. One of the things that this platform, I found it that was not matching with my necessities is that there was a specific for some specific boards and I wanted to work with some specific boards and I could not use it. Other thing is that the, the availability of the models because I want to solve my data science problem in a specific way. And in this case, uh, the offer is 
is uh, still developing, I think. I think at some point they're gonna have it, but uh, it's still that. But if you want to try it, uh, it's a very nice option for sure. However, today we are gonna go for trying to do it by scratch because I wanted to share all the points that you are gonna have, uh, you're gonna need to have in mind once you, have, once you want to develop the project to make decisions. First thing gonna be what, uh, what type of data science problem I have. It's a, good, it's a supervised or is it an unsupervised? Will be some, cla some classification, some progression, what, uh, what exactly? Will be an anomaly detection? Oh, all these kind of questions you are gonna also need to, to answer. And of course, depends on the type of data, you are gonna have different challenges. For instance, for anomaly detection, in this case, they were, in this case, we're using audio, and in the other cases, vibration. This means that the way that you are gonna need to uh, process this data is completely different. And work with audio, for instance, is very challenging. And you are gonna need to face some th challenges that you are not gonna need to face it in vibration data, for instance. Or if you are working with object recognition, with images, also will be different. Of course, maybe you're thinking, okay, but then let's collect data from zero. Yeah, yes, this is an option. Then you have more options inside this, uh, this option. You can have sensors. In this case, I'm sharing with you the sensor of CO2 from the project that I was mentioning before. But also you can have some microcontrollers with sensor integrated in the one that I was sharing, uh, uh, showing before. But maybe you're thinking, but wait, I have a mobile phone. I can collect data from there. Yes, of course you can, but also you're gonna need to handle then the storage or how are you gonna connect these or other challenges. But of course, everything, oh, there is a full, it's a world full of options. What more? We have public data sets. We can also use them. We can also use pre-training models. People is the training models. Google people, for instance, has models available that we can use and use transfer learning and uh, do some kind of adjustment of our case. Yeah, this is a possibility. However, you are gonna need also to understand which kind of data and if this is something that works for you. But yeah, there are a lot of options that we can have. Let's go for the designing model and training the model because of course, you need again to make decision. Don't be overwhelmed for this uh, slide because it's full of information, but I want just to show you a couple of things that are super, super important to have in consideration uh, before the start. Um, let's imagine, for instance, that uh, you have a, a case, a business case that you say, yeah, this, the solution, it's a neural network because I need to implement a neural network. Okay, then you can go to the supported models and then you need to decide what's gonna be the library for the training in your computer or in the cloud. And then you say, okay, let's go for TensorFlow. But then you are gonna also need to check if your microcontroller that we were talking at the beginning is compatible with these uh, libraries. And in the, fra the framework that we are gonna need to use, in this case for, for TensorFlow, gonna be TensorFlow Lite Micro, or for instance, also is compatible with uTensor, depends of the platform that you're using. Then this is quite a more complex that we were discussing at the beginning, the, ah yeah, choose a, a microcontroller that works for you. Yes, works for you, but you need to have very good defined the data science project and how you are gonna solve the problem. And as we were mentioning before, as we have also constraints of memory and storage, keep it simple. As simple you can solve your problem better. But sometimes, you know, you cannot simplify more and there are problems that needs to be solved for more complexity. But this is my recommendation always. But imagine, for instance, that you are using scikit-learn 
because it's a library that it's awesome for data science and you want to continue doing your project with scikit-learn. Can I do that, uh, the inference in a microcontroller? Yes, you can. You can use uh, the scikit-learn porter, for instance, or as we were mentioning for TensorFlow, there is other options. Just to mention that in case of TensorFlow, we have TensorFlow Lite, and then we have TensorFlow Mi Micro. In the case of TensorFlow Lite, is more for, the, for mobile, and for, mi for microcontrollers, is the micro. Just to give you this a small detail. And then imagine you train your neural network because you were, imagine that you were, the th you were analyzing uh, this case of detecting if in, in the room there is a person or the, there is a cat. Imagine that you are in a building, you are the security member and you need to know uh, that time to time the alarm sound and you need to know if it's just a cat or it's a person who is in the building. And you implement a system to to just have that. And then you implement your neural network, everything is going very smooth, very good in your computer. And you know, sometimes things only work in our computer and this is a problem. And then we have another point. We have the optimization because we need to fit all this neural network with all these layers, all these uh, parameters, all everything that was super good, our accuracy, all, all our metrics were very good in this microcontroller that is super small and has constraints that we were mentioning before. One of the, the most popular option is uh, to use quantification. Even I also added the width panic. In the case of quantification, what we are doing is re reduce the, the precision of the weight from 32 bits to 8 bits. And maybe someone has concerns right now, or maybe not, but you should have some concerns, because if we have this size, this information, imagine that this is information from my, one side to another side of my hand and we reduce it to this, with this quantification, we are losing some information. And maybe it's not the most important, but maybe some of this information that we are taking out, it imp was important for our business, or for our model. Then what is needed is to check before the deployment. We need to check if the performance of our model when we were trying it, training it in our computer with everything happy, everyone very, very happy with the success of, of this model is the same after the quantification. And, and also we are gonna need to think if we are eager to sacrifice a bit of accuracy in terms to have this model smaller because maybe if we are gonna do this for healthcare, we need to be very careful because if we have, a, I don't know, some accuracy that you accept as a good, also once you have this quantification process, you also need to have the same feeling that this is good. Well, the next challenge is the deployment of the model per se, and of course, the, the inference. But the deployment, the physical deployment, as we were mentioning before, should not be a problem once you know how to move one file from one to the, our microcontroller. Then, where is the challenge? In the case of uh, TensorFlow Lite, let's think in this case, they recommended, um, this is from the official documentation, and the, the recommended is convert our model to C array, and then run the inference in C++. Uh, and then it's like, okay, well, um, what now? Because maybe for all of you, write C++ code is something that you are doing every day, but for other people, maybe it's not. And could be a new challenge, right? It's like, okay, now I need to learn C++ to, run the, to write the code. What is very nice is excuse to learn a new programming language. Uh, this was very nice uh, motivation for me. However, for some other people, it could be something that is a challenge also. And I was wondering, is it possible to run the full pipeline with, um, with 
Python? Well, there is an option to extending macro Python in C. This is from the official documentation. And then what I did is try to find some projects of people who did that before. And I found this uh, person who provides some examples that run in TensorFlow with MicroPython. There are only three examples, but it's something that apparently is working for some specific boards also. Then, this is the workflow options that we have currently. We have our training and optimization step with uh, Python, but then the inference needs to be low-level programming languages or go to the inference with MicroPython that we still, um, we are still on that, I think, because it's the, it's the only case that I found some information. Then the question will be why aren't there more Python options for inference? And this could be a debate <laughs> uh, perfectly. Do, do you have any idea or comment someone who encouraged to, to say why we don't have more pipelines that the inference is in Python? Okay, uh, any other idea? Yeah, I, I, I completely agree com with uh, both of you. I think that it's uh, a thing of optimization, also could be other things like libraries, and I think that could be more things. I, sorry, Oy, sorry, sorry. The thing is that this is the perfect opportunity for two things as I see, I see it. First, we see that you can implement a workflow and projects that can work very good between Python and other programming languages and communities can interact and we can learn from each other. And on the other side, we can kind of open the door to see if we can find collaboration between the Python community members and see if we can kind of contribute to see more Python in this step. And of course, always um, trying to be open-minded and accept the limitations that we could have. With that reflection, I will. Uh, with that reflection, I would like to finish my presentation. Of course, that are uh, my information in case that you want to discuss about this reflection, or, or you need something of this whole pipeline. I will be very happy to share knowledge or discuss with you. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you.